So what I've got here then is my latest eBay purchase. It's a uh, HP Spectrum Analyzer. It's the 8559A. This is getting on for over 30 years old now, but uh, there's a few reasons why I actually uh, picked this up and I'll go over them in a moment. But uh, I was the only bidder on this. I got it for £50 and there's a couple of reasons why. Uh, the first reason is it was uh, pickup only and uh, luckily this guy just lived around the corner from me and uh, a second reason why is because he actually spelt the word spectrum and analyzer wrong so I was uh, quite lucky to get hold of this but he did advertise it as spares or repairs only now sometimes uh, when people advertise spares or repairs off eBay it's uh, often because uh, they've got a piece of equipment that they don't normally sell or they don't know anything about and he said in the description that he turned it on and uh, that was about it really all he got was this uh, wavy line on the display there and he did have a picture of it actually switched on but um, as I say I've got it here in the lab now and I'm inputting a uh, 2.4 gigahertz signal at uh, 5 dBm into this and we're just getting nothing on the screen whatsoever so there's obviously some sort of problem from the uh, input here actually getting into the spectrum analyzer itself and uh, the cal output there is working it's putting out a signal of 35 megahertz at minus 10 dBm so that side of things is actually working it's just uh, falling short on the input here so I thought it would make an interesting video to actually uh, open this up see if we can spot what's actually wrong with it and also a quick look inside one of these uh, 30 plus year old spectrum analyzers from HP now you may be wondering why I've purchased something so old and there are a few reasons for that and the uh, number one reason really is because they made so many of these and it was a proven uh, design from HP and because they made so many the uh, actual service manuals and operation manuals are really easy to get hold of and uh, any spare parts eBay is abundant with spare parts for these uh, spectrum analyzers because they made so many of them and uh, information in general you know so many ham radio enthusiasts actually have uh, one of these or a similar uh, model number to these so there's so much information out there if you actually need to fix one of these you know when you compare that to my uh, previous spectrum analyzer which was an Anritsu actually getting spare parts for that was uh, really really difficult and uh, information on it as well wasn't as abundant I'd say yeah, one of these and another reason for getting this is uh, that it's actually uh, modular the spectrum analyzer section here just pulls straight out and you can connect it into another display unit it will actually fit into this display unit here where I've got my swept amplitude analyzer in at the moment so it's it really is a uh, versatile unit if the display unit goes down you don't have to get in there and uh, fix the entire thing you can just pop it into a new display unit so let's pull the RF section out then take it over to the bench and see if we can actually find out what's actually going wrong with this so now that we've got this on the bench and uh, I'm just giving it a quick look over just see if I can see any potential problems and I've already spotted one on the underside but we'll take a look at that in a uh, moment but uh, generally it's quite tidy in here here on uh, J1 there's no coax actually connected to that now at this moment in time I don't know if that's a uh, test port and normally doesn't have anything connected to it I'll have to check the manual but uh, over here we've got an original uh, HP calibration sticker on the main RF unit now I don't know if that's the original sticker that uh, was placed on there when it came out of the factory or somebody's paid to have this uh, recalibrated by HP at all, I don't know. But uh, it is a good sign that nobody's actually played around with this, had these units open and possibly took parts out of it as well. So overall it looks uh, quite neat and tidy and doesn't look to have been interfered with but let me flip it over and I'll show you the first potential problem that we've got. So now that we can look at the underside you may already be able to spot the uh, problem that we've got with this and why it didn't actually work. Somebody has removed the uh, rigid coax connection from the uh, N-type input connector here 
going into this mechanical uh, attenuator down here so there was no signal coming into the unit at all so i think the best thing to do before we do anything else is uh, make a short pigtail to connect these two uh, points up here and feed a signal in it again just to see if we can get anything um, outputting onto that display screen and hopefully we might get lucky and somebody has just removed this uh, component here but uh, I don't really see why somebody should do that because uh, you know it's, it's just a piece of rigid coax it's uh, not an expensive part you quite often find with some sellers on eBay that specialise in shifting stuff like this is uh, they'll sell it as spares or repairs and uh, leave enough components in the unit so they can actually have a picture with it powered on and just say you know no further testing is being done because you'll often find that they'll take all these mechanical attenuators out because they can sell them separately for uh, quite uh, you know quite a bit of money on eBay and make a lot more profit that way and you end up buying the uh, what's left of the spectrum analyzer and then uh, finding that to actually put it back into a working state it's just not going to be uh, economically viable to do that so you have to be careful so before i put a connection between those two again i'm just having a general look around the unit and everything else seems to be in place but uh, these are the typical kind of units down in here that uh, you know sellers of this type of thing will actually remove because uh, there seems to be some kind of mixing unit down in there and again you can find these on eBay and they'll last for about 80-90 pounds just for that unit alone so you, you've got to be really really careful when you're buying second hand uh, things like this off eBay it's uh, much better sometimes to actually purchase something like this off a seller that doesn't specialize in selling something like this and that way you've got the best chance of getting a uh, complete unit and no parts missing so here i've got some examples of rigid coax that i've saved up over the years just by scrapping broken equipment and uh, i've got this thick stuff here this stuff will be really good to use because i know that this is rated to uh, beyond 30 gigahertz but it is a little bit thick and uh, as for bending this i can't really bend it because you need a special tool a lot like a uh, plumber would use because if you bend this and crack it then you will actually ruin it but uh, i've got some much thinner stuff here and uh, here but i think this looks very similar to the kind of uh, rigid coax that's already in the spectrum analyzer but just to test it to see if we can actually get it to work or not i'm just going to use this piece of uh, semi-rigid coax here this is from isotech and uh, i believe this is rated to six gigahertz but it's really extremely flexible so we'll stick that in and see if we do actually get a signal out of it so I've got this semi-rigid coax in place but it's a little bit too long I've got this loop up here and it's going to cause me problems uh, inserting this and uh, removing it again from the mainframe so I've just made up this uh, much shorter length of the coax because all I'm doing at this stage is just checking whether that uh, cures the problem and we can actually get a signal on the display so let's switch the spectrum analyzer on then and hopefully now that we've got that quick fix in place we'll see a signal coming out at around the 2.4 mark on the display and indeed we do so just tune that in a little bit the uh, signal generator has just been uh, calibrated it's spot on but it does need a good 20 to 30 minutes to warm up until it's super accurate but you can see there dial it in it's not that far out so uh, hopefully it was just that little bit of uh, piping missing so I think now what we need to do is make something that's a little bit more permanent rather than that quick fix and then we can test its accuracy a little bit better so I think the best way to uh, do this is if I sever the coax around this area here and transplant this onto the end of here and sever it around here and do the same with this on the end of there then i think we'll get a good connection there with the uh, rigid coax to the output of the spectrum analyzer i've just got to get in there and make sure that my measurements are correct but uh, i'm going to sever it off here and then apply some heat to this and then i don't have to worry about damaging any of this then and then i can remove this and do the same with the opposite end 
So I've cut out the section that I want to turn into my new feed coax and uh, I desoldered the end caps off here by just using a small uh, blowtorch just to heat this part of the uh, rigid coax up and then give it a little twist and it came out no problem at all. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use this to measure how much of that outside braid I need to cut away and how much of that dielectric I need to leave exposed. So I've got the outer braid cut away exposing the uh, dielectric underneath there and uh, without uh, using this as a uh, template this end here that we no longer need I think it would be a little bit uh, hit and miss and I probably wouldn't get it as accurate as uh, I can do by using this as a little template. So I've got both ends soldered in place now so I'm going to fit it to the spectrum analyzer and hopefully this will do the job. Now when it comes to fitting this rigid coax you don't want to force anything because there's not a lot of give to be had in this rigid coax and you don't want to break anything. So what I've done, I've uh, removed the end connector here on the front of the spectrum analyzer. I've uh, connected it down to the attenuator first but I haven't tightened it all the way up. And then what I can do is come in with the uh, end connector here get that connected up to this end then fasten it back down to the chassis here at the front and then tighten this little nut up here so then we've got a nice connection going all the way to the attenuator so that's the fix in place and hopefully uh, that will do the job but I have set up a uh, search on eBay to see if one actually comes up on eBay and uh, purchase the original one because uh, I'm not sure but uh, when I've looked in the manual itself the one in the manual actually comes out here from the end connector and then you've got a big long loop all the way back around here back on itself again and then feeds into the attenuator here so I'm not sure whether that's adding to the attenuation some way whether it's actually uh, you know tuned for that purpose having that loop in there I don't know but uh, if I find one cheap enough on eBay I'll uh, pick one up but uh, I think for now for what I do in this lab this is going to do the job just fine. So I was just setting up the spectrum analyzer ready to show you that that fix now works we're now getting a uh, signal into the spectrum analyzer and displaying it out on the display screen but uh, the reference uh, and attenuation knob here has uh, broken and what this is a dual purpose knob what you normally do is push it in to set the attenuation which is this scale around here and then pull it back out again to set the reference level but here we've got the spring that uh, aids in that push pull motion but it's wrapped itself around here and actually jammed up the uh, mechanism so again this is something else that you often find on equipment that's uh, quite old this is 30 plus years old so what I'm gonna have to do is remove that spring for now and then uh, just to show you the, the uh, actual display working but uh, a lot of these switches are a little bit dodgy if you uh, kind of wiggle them the display screen goes blank so they want a really good clean they want stripping down again and uh, cleaning with some uh, good quality contact cleaner and then uh, building back up again but uh, that's one of the reasons I chose a uh, HP spectrum analyzer because there's a lot of documentation and again it gives you a good um, actual uh, display in the uh, operation manual of how you actually take each one of these uh, knobs apart and then you can rebuild it back up again and this is a little interesting repair job that's been carried out at some time in its life this is the scale for the attenuation as I said and uh, this little uh, cut out plastic uh, piece here will actually direct you to where you are on this scale and there's a little uh, copper or brass something like that pin been uh, put in place here because the original one has obviously been uh, lost or broken because uh, that moves around here and then moves this marker so you can tell where you are on the uh, attenuation scale so somebody has done that fix sometime in the past so the knobs all back together again and it seems to work fine now if you push it in you can change the attenuation no problem at all but all the scales are out of whack so I am going to have to sort all that out and I had a quick look at the uh, manual and somebody has had this two uh, bits and put it all back together again and put the spring in the wrong way around so that was the problem 
with it actually jamming. So here's the spectrum analyzer then all working now we've got a nice display on the screen there I'm pretty uh, pleased how uh, crisp and clean this display is and I'm feeding in a 2.4 gigahertz signal at uh, 5 dBm and the calibration on here is pretty close uh, you know you can't really grumble at that 30 plus years old and uh, the signal generator has actually just been calibrated so that's spot on I had a bit of an accident with this and I have uh, some video footage to edit taking a look inside this but a friend of mine sneaked it into where he works on a Saturday morning gave it a full uh, calibration and service for me so the signal generator is spot on so as for the spectrum analyzer itself I'm pretty pleased for the money that I paid uh, it was a uh, simple little fix but uh, possibly somebody took that out of there to maybe get a slightly newer version of this model up and running I don't know it does seem a little bit strange but uh, you do take your chance with uh, spares or repairs off eBay but sometimes it can really pay off but again sometimes you can get your fingers burnt and I do feel a little bit for some sellers who specialize in selling this kind of equipment I do have some sellers that um, are on my favorite list on eBay but again you know a seller selling it as working it can be a bit of a grey area because uh, all, the, all this is working now and uh, you can test the frequency, feed up, feed a signal in there test its frequency range and everything but something like this is 30 plus years old and uh, as I've said I've got to strip down these knobs and give them all a bit of a clean and uh, you know some of them are a little bit dicky and you know it's really hard for sellers sometimes to sell something as working and some of these are a little bit dicky they can get uh, negative feedback because of that but uh, you know at the end of the day when something's 30 plus years old I think that's just something to be expected and I do like the analog spectrum analyzers especially from HP you can really do a lot of uh, you know testing and experiments with something like this so future videos I'm going to go through some of the things that you might need to buy to actually uh, you know measure antennas and uh, that sort of thing so look forward to some future videos using this spectrum analyzer so I hope you enjoyed this video and found it interesting a quick look inside one of these older spectrum analyzers and uh, quite an easy fix so I'm pretty pleased with that any questions or comments drop them below and uh, I'll do my best to answer them and hopefully you'll join me on the next one